Hello everyone and welcome to my Perilous Moons Guide. Vorlamor has been out for a few days now and I'm a really big fan of the Perilous Moons, so I wanted to make a quick guide to help others enjoy it as much as I have. As always, for the sake of the guide, I'm going to be using some very basic gear. I don't want to show you a guide where I'm using, you know, max melee, because chances are if you're watching this, you don't have that. I'm going to be wearing full dragon and a zombie axe for this guide, which is, I feel like, kind of the target audience for this content anyways. Now, you should be relatively familiar with the content as you have to do a run-through of the bosses during the quest, but I'll pretend you don't really know much because maybe you space barred and didn't pay attention. So one nice tip as you're in the lobby is if you ever get lost or confused about where you're going, I highly recommend opening up the world map and uh, you see these little yellow squares, they will show you what door will lead you to where. So let's say you want to get to the Blood Moon boss, okay? If you hover your cursor over this yellow square, you find, oh, this is the door I need to get to to get there. So if you ever get lost, just use the world map and uh, utilize these yellow squares. Now, one really great thing about the Perilous Moons is you do not need any of your own supplies. As you can see, my inventory is totally empty. So this is very Iron Man friendly. That being said, uh, let's talk about prepping. Personally, if I am at the start of a run, I am going to go to the Earth Chamber. So I'm going to go through the Northwestern Chamber. And I'm going to run down to this uh, cooking stove campsite area to the uh, Southwest. Okay, so once you're here, you are going to right-click the supply crate, and you are going to take from Herblore supply crate. It's going to give you a pestle and mortar and some vials of water. Uh, you're then going to collect from these grubby saplings, and uh, go ahead and use your pestle and mortar on the moonlight grubs, and then use the paste on the vials of water. This is going to make a moonlight potion. A moonlight potion is basically a super combat that boosts your defense even higher than that, and it also restores some prayer. And again, this is totally free to make. Now, from here, as far as food goes, you have a couple of options. You can either catch lizards, or you can catch fish. Now, I personally, I prefer lizards. So that's what I'm going to show you, and, and I'm going to explain why. Okay, so again, on the crate, take from hunting supplies. And you're going to come over to these uh, these rocks. Uh, click on a trap rock for each of these. Uh, and it's going to kind of set up this little trap. And then click on Russell Bush. And these lizards are going to run out. They're going to get caught in the trap. Pick them up and repeat this until you got about, oh, about nine of them in your inventory. So do this three times. Now, this is why I personally think lizards are superior to fish, at least for your initial prep. As you can see, I've got nine raw moss lizards. When you cook them, they are going to break down into three pieces of food each. So, that to me just makes it clearly superior to fish. But, again, it doesn't really matter. The fish and the lizards heal the same, so whatever your preference is. A couple more things before we do get into the bosses, kind of about prepping or, you know, managing your hit points and your prayer. When you are in between fights, make sure you right click on the cooking stove and click on make cuppa. This will uh, fully restore your run energy. And then, as far as your prayer points go, you're going to see these moonlight moths floating around. Now these are going to be huge for keeping your prayer up. Now, I want to mention this nice and early because, unfortunately, they do have a decently high requirement for uh, Hunter. So, in order to catch Moonlight Moths, you need 75 Hunter to uh, catch them with the net, or 85 Hunter to barehand them. Assuming you have at least 75, what these do is they will heal you about 20 prayer points per piece. So when you are in between bosses, you can click on Catch Moonlight Moth and get a bunch of prayer points. Now, one piece of advice, because they're kind of hard to see, if you're on Runelight, which you're probably on Runelight, hold down the Shift key and right-click the Moonlight Moth and click on Tag All. That'll make them easier to see. So in between bosses, make sure you catch these Moonlight Moths to fill up your prayer. Now, I want to mention that nice and early because if you don't have the hunter level required, which again is at least level uh, 75, you're going to want to make more potions. These moonlight potions will be your prayer potions. 
but if you can catch the moths, eh, you, you, that kind of upkeeps your prayer pretty well. So, I wanted to mention that now because if you don't have the hunter for the moths, make sure you get extra herb lore supplies and you make quite a few potions because those are going to be your prayer pods instead. Now, you can kill the bosses in whatever order you like, but this is my preferred order, as I feel like it just flows the best. So, to start, assuming you prep in the Earthbound Cave like I did, you're gonna run to the south, to this cave entrance right here. This is going to take you over to the Water Cave. Uh, and now, obviously, you can start here as well. If you choose to do fish instead of lizards, uh, you would grab the fishing supplies, and then you would catch the fish from this spot right here. Um, either way, uh, I like to come to the south here and pass through this entrance. I'll show you it on the map if you'd like. It's pretty much the center southernmost door in the streambound cavern. Um, this is going to take you to the Eclipse Moon. So as we get into the mechanics of the bosses themselves, the first piece of advice I want to give is do not pray melee. Jagex has confirmed that Prey Melee does not do anything, so please, do not be the guy in the room that's praying Melee. Now, all three of the bosses are going to have a couple of their own special mechanics each, but one thing that's consistent is that they will follow a clockwise pattern on the circles on the floor. Now, I would highly recommend, if you're new to this and you don't want to get overwhelmed, uh, before you enter the room, Take a look, and you'll notice that you can kind of see if a special attack is happening in the room before you enter. Instead, if you're new to it, I would highly recommend waiting until you see the circles on the floor highlighted. Because uh, if you do that, you know that it's not in the middle of a special attack, and then you can go in. Now again, for each of these bosses, they are going to move in a clockwise pattern, and you're going to want to make sure you're standing on the highlighted circle on the floor, otherwise you'll take rapid damage. So again, apart from following the highlighted tiles on the floor, let's look at the special attacks. Each of the bosses is going to have two unique special attacks. The first one we're going to look at for the Eclipse Moon is the... Uh, I don't know, the one where it teleports you to the middle, and it'll just keep spawning over and over. What you have to do is you have to click and look in the direction that it is spawning from, and if you are facing it when it attacks you, you will parry it, if you will. Um, the best advice I could give for this one is, as quickly as you can, look towards the boss, and as soon as you see your character kind of start your attack animation, you can go ahead and click to the next one. Um, I found it very useful to click, like, really close to the boss to make sure that I'm, you know, uh, facing the right direction. Uh, like I said, this one will just take a little bit of practice, you know, to get the timing right. But I would, again, I would look for your character's attack animation to start, and then you can, you know, change your direction to the next one. After you finish with that special attack, the highlighted circles will always resume on the north-northeastern circle. It's then again going to continue around in a clockwise motion. It'll uh, do a total of three circles, and then the next special attack will begin. The next special attack is one in which the boss will spawn a moon shield, and this one is real easy. You just gotta walk with the shield in a circle pattern around the boss. One tip that I have for this one, uh, the shield will move at a walking pace, so, you know, you can keep up with it well by walking. I would recommend control clicking. If you have your run energy turned on, if you control, like hold down the control key and click, you will walk. Uh, so, if I were you, get yourself lined up with a shield, and then control click, and you can just walk right alongside it, nice and easy. And once you finish the moon shield phase, the highlighted circle tiles will begin again on the south-southwesternmost circle, and the pattern will continue. Okay, so once you've completed the Eclipse Moon boss, it is going to put you in the Earthbound Cavern. From here, you can run directly east to this door, and that will take you to the Blue Moon. 
Once again, with the Blue Moon boss, the highlighted circles will follow a clockwise pattern. And let's take a look at the first special attack. The first special attack is the, uh, the Frozen Weapons one. Three ice chunks are going to spawn, and you have to break the one that is highlighted. You will see a, uh, a highlighted blue circle underneath it, and all you can do is kick the frozen weapons, and be sure to step away whenever you see the little icicles spawn. Uh, once you've done enough damage to it, you will get your weapon back, which that's why you're kicking it, is it stole your weapon. Uh, then just hang out in the middle. Uh, generally, you'll be quite safe in the middle of the room. And once the phase is over, the highlighted circles will resume in the north-northeastern spot. From there again, the highlighted circles follow a clockwise pattern, and once you get to the south-southwestern tile, it will start the next special attack mechanic, which is the, uh... Well, you could call it the brazier phase, if you will. There is going to be a brazier on the far western and eastern side of the room, and you have to go light to the braziers, doing your best to dodge the tornadoes the entire way. Now, if you're using a gear setup similar to mine, I would highly recommend doing this. Um, if you have high-level gear, you can actually just ignore this. If you don't light the braziers, the boss will heal, but it doesn't really heal that much to be honest so it's kind of up to you if you're feeling lazy you don't really need to do this uh, but if your gear is low level and you don't kill it very fast eh, you should probably do it once you have finished the brazier special attack mechanic the highlighted tiles will resume on the south southwestern circle once the blue moon is dead you are going to spawn in the ancient prison um, now, here is another vital tip for not using supplies. Kind of like how I, uh, you know, caught the butterflies. Right-click this cooking stove and click on Make Cuppa. When you do that, it'll uh, regenerate your, your run energy to full, which is really nice. Um, then head just a little bit to the south and you'll see more of these Moonlight Moths. Uh, be sure to catch those. You may want to turn on Prey Melee for these Sulfur Nagwas. Um... And then once you've caught enough of the moths to get your prayer back to full, run to the northeast and go through this entrance. This is going to take you to the Blood Moon, without a doubt, the most problematic of the three bosses. Now, the reason why the Blood Moon boss is the worst is because it heals a lot. And the amount that it heals is as follows. When it attacks you, it'll have three hit splats. The damage it does on the first hit splat heals itself one to one. So if it hits a five, it'll heal five. The second hit will heal one to two. So if it hits a five, it'll heal ten. And the third hit splat heals one to five. So if the third hit splat hits you a five, it'll heal itself twenty-five health. Now, here's the good thing about it. If any of the attacks hit a zero the rest of the attacks will hit a zero. So if the first hit is a zero, hits number two and three will also be a zero. Um, that being said, it is actually quite helpful to be tanky uh, for the Blood Moon boss. With the Blood Moon boss, it really can make the kills super slow if your defense is low and it does a lot of damage to you because it's just going to heal so much. So having as high of defense and, and, you know, as good of armor as you can going into this will be helpful for this boss. All right, let's take a look at the first special attack of the Blood Moon boss. This one is really easy. Uh, blood pools are going to spawn on the floor. And all you have to do is walk around and make sure you're not standing in them. And then, of course, the uh, highlighted circles will resume on the north northeastern spot after this special attack. Now, the Blood Moon's other special attack is, without a doubt, the thing that I get asked about the most on how to avoid being damaged here. There's going to be some Jaguars, and you need to find the one that has highlighted tiles and go attack that one. Now, if you stand next to the Jaguar, you take damage. But if you step back, you take damage from the Blood Pool. So what do you do? Well, you step back and forth at just the right time. It's a little bit difficult to describe the timing. Hopefully, by watching me do it, you can kind of get an idea of the timing. It's one of those things you're just going to have to get the feel for. Um, 
I guess one tip maybe that I could give to look out for, when the blood spawns behind you, it, it kind of lands on the floor and then spreads out a bit. I would say the tick after it's done, like, spreading is when you step back. Um... So yeah, hopefully again, watching me do it will hopefully give you an idea yourself, and then you're just going to have to go practice it. Um, but yeah, just find the highlighted jaguar, step back, and then click on the jaguar to step back forward at just the right time, and you won't take any damage. In fact, by hitting the jaguar, you'll heal yourself. And there you have it. You have killed all three bosses. I would once again make a cuppa from the stove, Grab some more of these Moonlight Moths and make your way south. You're gonna go through this very large entrance on the far south side of the room. And that is going to bring you to the Antechamber, aka the Chest Room. Go ahead and search the Lunar Chest in the middle and claim your rewards. Unlucky, no uniques to the video, unfortunate. From there, you are going to run to the north. Go ahead and pass through this entrance. Now, at this point, if you are in need of more food or potions, you can do so right here. Uh, grab a fishing net from the supply crate and catch some fish, or grab some herb lore supplies, grab some grubs, and make more potions. And then, you're just gonna head back into this entrance, and the cycle will begin just as it did before, starting with the Eclipse Moon. Now, I would like to give one more general tip about increasing your DPS, which hopefully will be helpful for some of you if you're kind of a lower level, and that is to use a halberd. Now, that might sound kind of crazy because I'm a, I'm a halberd hater. Listen, halberds are one of those things where it's like, oh, they hit big numbers, but, like, they actually suck for DPS, unless you use them correctly. And the correct way to use a halberd is to use it in a time where you are unable to hit the boss after your special attack anyway. Now, these bosses are perfect for that because they've got a couple of mechanics where you have to stop hitting the boss. And so, a good DPS increasing tip is to bring a halberd, whether that be a dragon or a crystal, and you want to use a special attack right before it is going to begin it's special attack. So when you get to the, you know, the, the northwestern or the southwestern tile, the one before it's going to start a special attack, I would hit the boss once with your regular weapon and then drop a halberd spec. Because again, the, the, the problem with halberds is their speed. But if, you ha if you're literally forced to stop hitting the boss anyway, then the slow speed doesn't actually matter. So, if you can use a dragon or a crystal halberd, I would recommend bringing it. Use it as a last hit spec before you deal with the boss's special attacks, and it'll increase your DPS a bit. Well, I think that summarizes the Perilous Moons pretty well. I think it's really great content. I enjoy it a lot. Um, it's not all that difficult. I think the biggest issue you're going to face is if you're a lower level, the Blood Moon is going to heal a lot, and it's going to be annoying. And there just really isn't much you can do about it other than get higher defense and get better armor. It just kind of is what it is, unfortunately. I hope you found the guide to be helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a like, and I will see you all soon.